Miss Carnett and Sister Posley. God bless you all. Good to see you. Linda Walker and Betty Marshall. God bless you. Y'all coming in by the twos on me. All right, good to see you. That look like Percy Lewis and Mildred Hubbard. God bless y'all. <laughs> good to see everybody. I thought I'd come on a couple minutes early and see who was coming on. Sister Leona Tennant and Sister Willie Neely. Amen. God bless y'all. Good to see you. Amen. Y'all can greet each other a little bit there. You know, like the ladies in the women Bible study, they, they come on talk for a half an hour. I, <laughs> I be sitting there listening to them. They be talking for a half an hour, laughing and talking. <laughs> All right, Perth. Uh, while they're coming on, y'all can pass the word. I'm going to have Pastor Spears uh, uh, October 1st, I think that is the first uh Viewing, they're gonna have a viewing that evening on the, on the, uh, on the on the October first from I think it's uh, let me let me quick and uh, at my email. Uh, okay, they're gonna have a celebration of life Thursday, October the first. They'll be from three to eight p.m. Uh, will be a, a they call it a line line in state at the at the church, and then Friday, the second would be from 12 until 6, he would be lying in state at the church, and uh, Friday evening at 6 to uh, 8, they're going to do a musical, uh, they call it a celebration of life musical, and Saturday, October the 3rd, uh, they're going to have from 9 until 10 would be the visitation. And then from 10 until 11, that October the 3rd will be uh, the funeral service. And it's going to, they're going to be at St. Michael's Baptist Church. That's 4106 West Monroe, at Chicago. So uh, those are the arrangements that they have for Pastor Spears. Uh, I don't know we can... Uh, we got time out. Sister Lee will probably... Uh, put it out on our Facebook page if it, if you don't see it somewhere else before then, because I'm quite sure she got the email at the church as well. So we want we'll we'll put it out there so uh, everybody know when it is, and uh, we'll we'll pay our uh, condolences somehow from St. Luke, cause you know we got to show up, Amen. After all this man has done for us and and uh, been our friend through the years, so. Uh, Pastor Spears' uh, celebration is going to begin October the 1st. So October the 1st uh, will begin his uh, celebration of life. Amen. <clears throat> Good evening, Sister Brenda, Sister Sarah. God bless you all. And some I miss, Sister uh, Wilson Moore. God bless. God, I uh, missed some of you while I was reading this email. But good to see all of you coming on. And... Uh, we are so happy to have you all so we can uh, stay. Bless you, girl. Good to see you, cousin. <laughs> uh, so it's, uh, all of us uh, know Pastor Spears, so we want to be a blessing and help the church. Amen. All right, let's start with prayer. And we are a good lesson today, so let us get going with prayer. Father, we're so grateful to you for another blessed day that you've given. We thank you for watching over us again uh, last night allowed another beautiful day that you made and thank you for taking us through that day to this point some of us have been on our and, and you brought us home we can now come and and uh, listen to your word and, and get a word from you as to what you are saying to us in today's living praying heavenly father for safety and and comfort for our people while uh, you are working. We know that this, you are doing the work. We just ask you to, to keep our people safe and protected. Mm -hmm. We thank you for those that you brought through it amen, already and, and, and allowed them to be back on their feet. So we thank God for you. And uh, we just thank you for blessing us, the St. Luke Baptist Church family the way you have. 
continue to bless and keep them. And, and Father, as we study this lesson, open up our hearts and our minds to understand your word so that we might be able to use it to help others as we go forth in this journey. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. All right. Uh, uh, this week, uh, we're dealing with, with how God is providing for Moses uh, some help, okay? Uh, I think uh, last week when we were talking about uh, the victory over the Amalekites, how Moses needs some help to hold his arms up because his arms had gotten tired of uh, of, of uh, holding up that up his arms, and I, I preached Sunday about that. Help me, so I can help you. You know, we we that's how we help each other. Is uh, we have to keep each other strong. We have to keep each other up. We have to keep each other built up. No, nobody can get wore out. Uh, good to see you, Kevin. Nobody can get war out. Bob, God bless you. Good to see you. Uh, and and continue to do ministry. Uh, burnout is probably one of the one of the uh, uh, I guess most common thing among preachers. I I when I was uh, uh, I guess it's probably been thirty years ago or thirty some years ago or over thirty years ago. I would just I, I ordered a set of tapes from somebody and in that was a, it was a five set of tapes and I'll tell you how long it's been. They were they were uh, uh, those big tapes you stuck into the into the uh, video thing <laughs> to try to even remember what they were called. But that's how that's the kind of tapes that they were. And, uh, and I was I was in my office one night and I was just sitting there. And one of the tapes said it's only. And so I decided I was going to put it in since I was there by myself and try to see what it was about. And when I put it in there, it was about, it was preachers talking about burnout. And uh, one of the preachers in that was, and they were talking about the symptoms they had. They named out three or four symptoms that were the main symptoms for burnout. And every one, every time they name one, I raise up a little bit. That's me. I'm not, mm. I, I, that's me. I had all other symptoms of burnout, and now because I was trying to do everything in the church, uh, keep the church going, make sure everything. That's right, person. Thank you, VCR. I was trying, <laughs> I was trying to remember what it was. I had to. I stuck that VCR in there, and that, and that, that was about burnout. That's what it was about. It was actually about burnout. And my wife will tell you, I told her, if I don't get away, I, I feel like I, I, my whole body had got jittery like. And I've told her, I said, I feel like I'm about to have a stroke. And it was all because of burnout. And so let me just read the uh, introduction to the to the to our lesson tonight. It's called God Provide Judges to Help Moses. And our lesson is coming out of Exodus uh, chapter 18. And we're going to verse 13 through 26. But let me just read this to you and, and, and what he said. He said, a noun, burnout, entered the English language less than a century ago. The, the Marion Webster uh, Collegial Dictionary defines it as or physical or emotional strength or motivation, usually as a result of prolonged stress or frustration, the exhaustion of physical or emotional strength or motivation, uh, and it's usually, he said, as a result of prolonged stress or frustration. And then he said, almost everyone is, is susceptible to burnout. Mm -hmm. The demands and the pressures of can challenge people physically, mentally, and emotionally. Management textbooks and seminars tell us that one of the primary means of dealing with stress and avoiding burnout is delegation. Delegation. Assign authority or responsibilities to others. Stress and burnout are nothing new. Of course, it's nothing new, of course. And neither is the, me uh, the mechanics of delegation 
relieve stress and improve efficiency. And, and improve efficiency. So that lesson was learned more than 3,400 years ago in the Sinai wilderness. Now that's what Moses learned in the Sinai wilderness that he had gotten burnt out. Now think about uh, this is not the first one. He, he had been uh, stressed out about water for the people to drink, uh, food for them to eat, uh, murmuring in, in the congregation and all of these things that was going on within that within the congregation was weighing heavily upon Moses. So uh, now it comes down uh, uh, that his father-in-law <clears throat> comes, uh, this, the, the beginning of this lesson, you find Moses, uh, his father-in-law Jethro, uh, bringing Moses' wife and two sons to Moses, okay? That's in the beginning of the chapter. He brings Moses' uh, wife and the two sons down to where Moses is. And and, uh, and 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 when he gets there and, and he finds something that's going on, uh, Moses, when Moses sees him, he greets them, he bows down and, and honors him and do all of this. But then Jethro uh, watches something beginning at verse 13. It said, and the Mara, uh, it came to pass on the Mara that Moses set to judge the people. And the people stood by Moses from the morning until now, think about this. You see now how we uh, have people who are waiting on food and stuff and lines. They have long lines and and uh, with these people who didn't have food and they was in these soup lines, they used to get in line early and they wrap around the building trying to get a box of food or something like that. And and this was this is what people were doing. They were they were standing around. They had some issues that they were bringing to Moses. Uh, God bless you, Dr. Bird. They had issues that they were bringing to Moses, okay? And as they bring these issues to Moses, Moses is dealing with every one of these issues by himself. Mm -hmm. And Moses' father-in-law saw all he did. Now, notice this said. He said he saw all that he did to the people. Now, his father-in-law is looking at the fact, uh, not only that Moses is doing this and staying there all day, but Moses got these people standing in line day long to get hurt. Can you imagine people just standing in line all day long to get hurt? They got they got some problems, they got uh, something, questions or whatever it is they got going on. Here they are standing in line all day to get hurt. And his father-in-law, a wise man, says what is this thing that thou doest to the people? What are you doing to the people? Why sit thou thyself alone and all the people stand by thee from morning until evening? Now the people are standing in line from morning until evening to get to talk to Moses. And so the first outline is called a, a perceptive conclusion. A perceptive conclusion. Now, this man perceived something that, that he saw this, and he, he knew that this wasn't right for people to stand in line all day long to talk to Moses. And Moses said unto his father-in-law, now notice he said, he said, because the people come unto me to inquire of God. They want me, they want to know what God is saying. They come and asking me about God and the issue they have. And what God is saying about that issue. That's that's why they're coming. And 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 he said, uh, and also when they have a matter, they come to me. Whenever they got a problem, they come to me. And, and I judge between one and another. And I do make them to know the statutes of God and his law. So I explain to them the statutes of God's law. And I tell them what's right and what's wrong. All by myself. Y'all, <laughs> that's why I said last week lesson. I 
But when it, in, in chapter 17, uh, somebody helped. Moses needed help. And and he would and, and so they set him on a rock, and one got on one side, and other got on the other side, and they held his arms up. They but said the Bible said hand. God was in his hand, and they held his hand up so that the Israelites could prevail. Because when now, like I said, the the, the power that God put in the he, he used that rod as a a, a, a physical uh, demonstration of his power to the people. So the people, people need, people just need to know that God is with them. They need to have something physical that they can see. If they don't have something physical they can see, people are, they get, I don't know what you want to say they get, but they get that. <laughs> you know, if they don't have something physical to look at. And so uh, gave that rod and put power in that rod for Moses to use the rod to show the people that his power was present. All right. And so, uh, but another thing I believe it was that he put the power in the hand of the uh, I've been in a lot of class and the preachers always said uh, the first Baptist church of the wilderness, Pastor Moses was over. And so he gave Pastor Moses, of the first Baptist church of the wilderness, the power over the church and the power was in that rod that for the people to see that God was with them with his power. But it was in, in Moses' hand. And I, that's why I said I, yesterday, I, uh, Sunday, I said I believe that maybe, now you know, uh, by me being a theologian, I can, I, can, uh, mm -hmm. I can also, when I look at the scripture, I can see other things in there that is relevant to what we're talking about. But some people don't see. And I, I could see that uh, 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 her maybe, you know, being anxious said, Moses, let me hold it up for a while. He grabbed the rod and held it up. And the, and the, and the uh, Amalek was still prevailed. And, and maybe Aaron said, let me try it. I, I'm the priest. Let me try it. He grabbed and he held it up. I'm Moses' brother. Uh, and nothing happened. But when they put it back in Moses' hand and Moses held it up, then the Israelites began to prevail again. Mm -hmm. So I think they come to the conclusion that we got to leave this power in the hand of the man of God if the children of God are going to be blessed. Mm -hmm. And I, I still say that. I, I say that today. I say that today. The reason a lot of churches that they are in is because the power is not in the hand of the man of God. People that took over churches and, and they are running the churches and things and, and that's not their gift. That's not their ability. God gave the man of God the, the power to run the church. And so uh, they saw that Moses needed some help though. Now when Moses needed help, they put a rock under him and then they held his hands up, but they left the rod in his hands. And you see what happened when the rod was in Moses' hand. And the children of Israel prevailed, and the Bible said, and they disfitted Amalek. They destroyed Amalek. They 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 put him on the run. That's what that's what that because it was in the right hand. And now here we are, one chapter later. A few, I don't know how long down the road this is from the time that they just got with, finished with Amalek, but here Moses is. From morning until evening. And I said some years ago about this. I said, I wonder did uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Jeff Rowe's daughter go to him and said, Daddy, Moses ain't been home all day. He ain't. And then when he come home, he's so tired, he don't do it, but go in there and go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Now, we, I, me and the kids and come down here, he ain't spent no time with us. And and Jethro probably went out there to kind of, a man of God, because he believed in God. He the one told Moses back in when Moses first, that, that God lived in the mountain. And so uh, he, I believe he, he went out there just to observe and see why this thing was happening like this. And, and he get out here and he find Moses sitting here all day long 
and the people standing in line all day long to be heard. And so Moses in verse 17, and Moses' father-in-law said unto him, the thing that thou doest is not good. Mm. Now see, sometimes uh, us preachers, we want to help people so bad that we find ourselves doing some things that might not be good because we, so, we want to help people. We want to do our best. We want to put forth our best effort. We want people to be blessed. And so we want to help our people, and sometimes we, we need somebody to touch us on the shoulder and say, hey, thing you're doing is not good. And this is what he told him. It's, it's not good. This, this that thou doing is not good, Moses. And thou will surely, now what, look at this, thou will surely wear away. You're going to wear away. Who can, this is what this burnout is about. More preachers have quit the ministry because of they get burnt out and they don't want to deal with it no more. They just say, I'm, I'm done. I can't do this no more. Now, uh, I got burnt out. I really did. I got burnt out. And uh, and when I th the Lord showed me that I needed help. And that was the very reason I brought on an assistant pastor because I needed some help. If I'm going to bless the people and the people be blessed, I got to have somebody help me do that. I can't do all this work by myself. It's too much. It's too heavy. And that's what uh, Jethro says to Moses. This thing is too heavy for you. It's not good, Moses, for you to do this, uh, all, to stay out here all day long. You're going to wear yourself down. You're going to wear yourself down. And both thou and those people that is with thee, you, they, you're going to wear them down. They're going to get tired. For this thing is too heavy for you. Okay? It's too heavy for you. It's too much of a burden for you. Okay, so thou art not able to perform it uh, thyself. You can't do this by yourself. Ministry cannot, a church cannot be carried by itself. Ministry cannot be carried by itself. I read a book uh, on leading your church to grow. And the book said that one of the main things in, in most churches, they get hung up about 200 people. When they get up to about 200 people, say they stagnate. And he said, experts been trying to figure it out. And to me, he answers his own question because he said, experts been trying to figure it out why you get that. He said, because a, a, a shepherd can only mine about uh, 200 sheep. And after that, he need to go to the ranchers more. He need to get him a straw boss. Like uh, you look at Western, the, the rancher got, a, got a, a, a man in the bunkhouse who's handling the thing. And then he said, you get to another level. And then you got to shift again, and you got to go to got to go to the uh, the manager's mode, where you you got to have lead people over certain areas while you manage that area, the whole thing. And then he said, after you get to that, you got to go to the CEO mode, where you got managers that's handling handling the leaders, and then the leaders are handling others. And and when you do that, he said the church, but. Think about this. Moses, he, he told Moses, you're going to wear away. And you're going to wear the people away. What, people are going to get tired of coming. And churches got to understand that. If you holding the people up and not giving them uh, the, the what everybody, sometimes people need a little spiritual guidance. And if you are not giving them that, then they're going to get it. They got to go, they got to go where they can get it at. So they got to have help. And this is the very reason, if y'all notice, I put on a, a, an assistant pastor some years ago. And then I, I, I got uh, ministry leaders. Now, you watch this, how, how Jethro told Moses to set this up. And you're going to see that St. Luke is kind of set up in this manner. That's one of the reasons I, I feel one of the main reasons St. Luke has grown and maintaining this growth and and uh, and doing what it is doing is because of the help that 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 uh, we have at St. Luke, and and watch what uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, watch what the next thing said. He gave sound advice now. Now, when you see a situation, then you should be able to give some advice to help the situation. Don't come up with a problem and then don't have no 
try to find some kind of solution to the problem. You know there's a problem, then we need to try to help find a solution to the problem. Uh, St. Luke, no, I always told him, get your head out of the problem barrel and look in the solution barrel because for every problem, there is a solution. But you don't stick, you don't, if you, as long as you got your head in the problem barrel, you're never going to find a solution because you're not even looking for one. All you're doing is staring at your problem. You got a problem, go try to find a way to get out of that. Find a, a, there's a solution some way. And you can find that solution. Now watch what Jethro, he offers Moses some sound advice. Jethro says, hearken now unto my voice. Listen to me, Moses. I'll give you some counsel. I'm going to give you some good counsel. And now watch this, though, he says. And God shall be with you. In other words, ask God and see what he Now he ain't going to tell him. He ain't telling him to just go do what he said. He, he's telling him he want him and God shall be with you. If you watch and see what God says about it. Be thou for the people of God, Godward, that thou mayest bring the call unto God. Now you go to God and you see what God said. Do you let God know I'm concerned about these people? They're standing in line and, and, and waiting on me to answer them. I need to know uh, what, what if this is okay for me to do. Uh, can, how can I do this? And he said, you go to God and, and bring the calls to God and let God direct you with it. Now, see, that's what people need to understand. If you're going to give the pastor some advice, uh, you think you're giving him some advice. If he, you see something that, that's going to say, Pastor, I see this, but you, I, if you don't, I, mean, I, I just thought you, you know, I, I just throwing this out. Uh, but you, uh, you pray about it and see what the Lord says. Now, I've always said to my deacon from the beginning, when we first started the church, I said, brother, I appreciate y'all y'all thing. When you got something, y'all bring it to me. I, I appreciate that. But I want y'all to understand, whatever is the Lord said do, that's what I'm going to do. Now, but if y'all got something, y'all see something, and we'll see if that's what God said do with it. But that's what we have to do. So you bring it to the pastor, and he told him, you go and you talk to God and see what God said. And then thou shalt teach them of the ordinances and law and shall show them the way wherein they shall walk and the work of they, that they must do. Now, train somebody else. Now, this is, it goes back to what the, uh, the Bible says that the, the pastor's responsibility in the church, uh, he's, he's to equip the saints, Paul says, for the work of the ministry. And that's right here. Jethro is telling Moses back then, you got to equip some folks, Moses, that can help you carry this ministry. You ain't going to be able to do all this, this ministry by yourself. Man, yo, you got a mega church out here. You got almost, you got between two and three million members out here. You ain't going to be able to serve no two to three million people as no pastor. You got to, you got to do something. He's saying you, you got a mega church and you need some help. So you need to equip some folks who can help you with this ministry. And that's exactly what Jethro, the advice Jethro was giving him, get you some people, train them so they can help you. That's what he said. Teach them the ordinance and the law that, and, and, and show them the way wherein they shall walk and the work that they must do. Show them what they're going to be getting into. Show them the work they got to do so they can help you with this ministry. Uh, I was, I, I've been going to the conventions for 40 years, oh, about 30, uh, almost 40 years, should I say, close to 40 years. Because when I first started pastoring, I started going to conventions. I started sitting in, in classrooms and, uh, and listening to the, I used to always go to the pastor's division because I was trying to learn to be a good pastor. And I heard some preachers say some things that, and the Lord would speak to me in the spirit, so that's, don't do that. They talking about they want to keep their people ignorant. Yeah. I don't know who listening, but you you can't teach them too much. Then they don't need you. I thought that was one of the most ignorant things that I'd ever heard. Keep people's ignorant? No, no, no. I thought I'm supposed to teach you 
Matter of fact, when I went, when they sent me to seminary, and I come back and I was teaching them, I was learning in seminary, I was bringing it back, I was teaching it to the church. And Miss Forrest said to me one, one night in Bible, so I said, Reverend, you, you act like you're trying to teach us everything you don't learn. I said, I am. I'm trying to teach y'all everything I learned. Y'all sent me to get it. I'm going to bring it back to you. I didn't go just to get it. I brought one, got it, so I can bring it back and give it. I think when people know better, they can do better. That's my, that's my philosophy on ministry. If people know better, they can do better. If they don't know, they, don't, they can't do. And so he was saying here, teach, get some people, train them. Teach them what the word of God says. Teach them what, how they are supposed to walk. Let them know, listen, this is how you got to live. If, and I, my, I tell them in a minute, as a preacher, there's a certain way you got to live before the people. You can't preach to nobody if you don't live it right. You got to be living right in order to preach and teach people. And, and, and if, you, if you don't do that, ain't no way you're going to be able to reach the people that you need to reach. Your life has got to be what you say. And, uh, and that's what he said. You got to get them where they, that they must show them how they got to walk and then show them the work that they need to do. This, this ain't no easy job. I said to some people once, I said, follow me for a day with me for a day. And Reverend Darby, Reverend Darby used to, he was, he was stayed with me. Reverend Darby was right with me at, at when he was uh, my administrative assistant. He was right with me all the time. And Reverend Darby come back and he told the people, y'all don't know what this man be going through in a day's time. He said, if y'all said, if y'all just see the work that this man be doing, the, the phone call, the, the people he visit, all this stuff. He said, I wouldn't want this. That's what he said. He's y'all don't know what this man be doing. And, and see, you got to, that's why I said that people got to understand the work. It's not an easy job, but it's a necessary job. But you can't do it all by yourself. That's the key. Now watch what, it, what Jethro said in verse, in verse 21. He said, moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able me. Not just anybody. See, some folks will run up. I want to I want to do this and I want to do that. But are they able? When he's saying able men, you got to get men who, uh, who, who, who just can't. Now, we've been in this thing, what, 40, almost 40 years. And I've been probably, I probably ordained more than 40 deacons. I don't know exactly how many it's been. Probably more than 40 deacons. But I chose them deacons out of the congregation. I haven't made very many mistakes. Out of, out of the, all the deacons I've had, I can say I probably only made about two or three mistakes. And I, some of the time, people suggesting that these, you know, be old men, or they come to me and say they'd like to be a deacon or whatever. And I tried to, you know, accommodate them. But I watched them in the middle of the congregation before I chose them. And I tried to choose able men that could do this work. And, and, and I, I wanted to make sure oh, they feared God too. That they feared God. And they were men of truth, he said. And hated covenants. Not men who was in this thing for no money. See, this is what's wrong <clears throat> with the church. That today, most of the men in the pulpit are hirelings. They're not a true shepherd is not in this thing for money. A true, true. Now, out of all of the years that 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 I went without, and and right now, I don't get as I don't try to take as much money from our congregation as preachers who come into these new who don't even have the kind of church that St. Luke is, and they'll come in demanding that salary be greater than mine. But I just I. I'm, I'm not greedy about money. I don't, I, this is, a, it's about ministry to me. God, I, I, if I didn't believe God would provide for me, I never would have walked away from my, my good job that I had. I stayed on there and retired. But I just believe that God was going to do it. So you can't be, you can't, you got to get men who's able, men who fear God, and men who trust God, and who hate covetousness. And then Jethro said, then you can place them over this stuff. And, and notice how he breaks it down. Put some 
over thousands. Now you got oh, about the two, three million people here. So you got some over the thousand. That means that 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 this man here will have so many, maybe say, let's say 200,000 that he's going to be covering. And then he got another handling 200,000, another handling 200,000, another until he got everybody covered. So that man has got 200,000. And then you got under him rulers over hundreds. So if he got 200,000, he might put uh, his man over 500, this one over 500, this one over 500, this one over 500. So they can, they can be dealing with them on this. And then you get some, put them over 50. Okay, you got this, this man, he got 50 here, 50 here, 50 here, 50 here. And, and then you got some over 10. This got 10, 10, 10 that he's dealing with. Okay, so you got, you got all of these. You done broke this thing down. So ain't nobody now going to get burnt out. Ain't nobody going to get woe out because you got some over the 10s. And, and then that he going to have, he, he gonna, the next man is going to have 10s. He going to have five of them 10s maybe because he going to be over the 50. All right. So he got, he got five of those. That, so that, okay, I'm handling the, this, this is my group. I'm handling them. They got a problem. They bring it to me. And then it goes on down the line like that. And then it goes, it works its way up. And I told you, I think we got St. Luke set up similar to that. And, and it just, it wasn't that, that, uh, I really, I think it was just that uh, the Lord just did it that way just, that, because I believe the Lord Lord was helping me. That, he was helping me just like it said, God provide judges to help Moses. That God would just provide people to help me because we got our ministry leaders. Now, the ministry leaders handle the people in their ministry. They should be able, that's why I tell them they should be able to do Bible study or they should be able to, to uh to, to have prayer and 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 a little little lesson before they open up their their thing, thing else that's what they ought to be able to do okay they got to have those they got this way you got to have people over there who can do those things and so we got the uh, the the ministry leaders and then we got the deacon ministry the deacon family ministry they got so many of these families and 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 then also the, the deacons, every deacon is assigned to one of the ministries. He that he that help these ministries, and he got so many uh, families that he, he he helps out in the church with. All right, then when when you get get past him, they, if he have a problem, and and uh, th then we got uh, we got the preachers. That's in. Well, well, let me step. I got another step. I I added. We got the you got the ministry leaders and you got the you got the deacon family ministry that and then you got the ministry manager. Mm -hmm. Now he's watching all of the ministry. He's helping all the ministry. If anything need to be done, he takes care of that. Then if it get to where he can't handle it, he finds Jones. Reverend Jones is, is the pastor's assistant. So he'll find Reverend Jones. And Reverend Jones, you can handle it. If he can't handle it, then he'll come to me. Because if, if I had to handle every one of the little things that goes on in the churches, out every little forest fire, my, my, my shoe soul is going to be burned up if I'm stumping out all these forest fires. We got some forest fires going on in the and I got to try to stump them out. All of them, my shoes going to be burnt up. <laughs> and my legs going to get tired of putting out these fires. So you got to have people to help you. That's what Jethro was telling Moses. Get somebody to help you, man. You can't do this thing. It's too heavy for you. And that's what's wrong with most churches. The pastor's trying to do everything. And that's what I said Sunday out there. I, I don't have to worry about the, men, the, the, the women being taught. We got to... Uh, a women Bible study. I don't have to worry about that. We don't have to, I don't have to worry about I used to have folks lined upside outside of my door on Sunday. And it, it was they started out there. They used to be out there before church started. And and I told Reverend Darwin them I said, Reverend, I said, D, I said, y'all need to help me out here. Don't don't let the people come in on me 
when I'm trying to prepare to go out to preach. Tell them to wait until after I finish preaching and then I'll talk to them. And I, I used to hear Reverend Darby outside the door. Uh, uh, I, I, yeah, can I help you? I, I, I want to I talk to the pastor. Said, uh, uh, can it wait till after 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 service? He he's preparing to preach. Yes, it can wait. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. And 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 see, they were they they was out there helping me keep the people up because they were lined up. And then my wife will tell you they be lined up outside the door when I finished preaching. And and I'd get home. They didn't. If they ain't, if they did waiting on me, they starved to death almost by the time I get home from, from that. But now we got spiritual guidance ministry. I, and I'm, I told somebody not too long ago, I said, I haven't had to deal with, a, with, with any guidance like that in a long time. With this spiritual guidance ministry and old people that are in the spiritual guidance ministry helping out the past on that area, I don't have to worry about it. Y'all, y'all doing a great job in that. And so this is what helped. This is what Moses was doing. Moses was dealing with these little matters, little spiritual matters sometimes that he had to deal with. He was dealing with those things. But but when you got somebody to help you deal with them, you don't you the you take care of the big thing. That's what Jethro told Moses. Notice what he said. He said, uh, uh, he told me in the 22nd, and let them judge the people at all seasons. All at all, and let them do it. And it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto you. Every small matter they shall judge. So shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with you. They help take this burden off of you. Let them help take burden off of you. Now, another thing that, that uh, E. Frank, I mean, uh, uh, the man uh, in his book was, Wagner said that there are a lot of ministers who's afraid to share their ministry. Now, that's this, this, this means here, you got to share your ministry with other people in the church. But he said there are some preachers who's afraid to share their ministry. And that's what hurts a church when a preacher is afraid to share his ministry. And one of the reasons he gave was that a lot of them didn't do that way in the first place. Because he said, if you know that God placed you there, you don't have to worry about nobody. But if you hooked and crooked and did everything else to get in there, then you got to hook and crook to try to stay in there. So you're watching everything and everybody. I used to hear preachers say in the, in the, in the uh, classes and things, I don't to meet in my church unless I meet with them because I don't know what they're going to be talking about. And I ain't about to let them be meeting without me. And I sat back there and shook my head and I said, I ain't trying to meet every time no auxiliary meet. All these auxiliaries, I think we got over 40 or 50 auxiliaries in the church. And every time they meet, I'm going to be there. Not me. That's deacon. Over these ministries. The deacons meet with them. See, this is what Jethro was telling Moses. You got to, you can't be there every time the doors open. When are you gonna have any time to study the word of God? Now y'all know slop, y'all. What do I mean by that? Down south we used to slop the halls. Slop was we pulled all of the leftovers from the plates and things and Rake them off in in a in a in a five gallon bucket, and then wash the dishes. And then when we finish washing the dishes, pour that old dirty grease of dish water in the five gallon bucket. Take it out there and pour it in a hog trough. The hogs go at it, slopping the hog. That's just anything. Just giving them anything. He throwing anything on the table. Y'all know I don't do y'all like that. I prepare y'all green pastors to eat from. Give you fresh water to drink. And it's because I got if you If I didn't have no help, I wouldn't have time to get into the Word. I wouldn't have that kind of time. That's why we got to, we got to realize that, that, that what Jethro was saying is, is really applicable to us today. We need to, we need to take heed of this. But you gotta be, it's got to be that God is, 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 is in it. And God placed you in it. 
Because otherwise, he said, you won't share your ministry. You'll be afraid to share that ministry with somebody else. So notice, notice uh, uh, Jethro, Jethro said uh, to Moses, let him help bear the burden. If thou shalt do this, he, this thing, he said, if thou shalt do this thing, and then God command you so. Now, again, he said, now, only if God say so. That's what you got. You don't do it unless God tell you to do it. Now, I'm just giving you some advice on how you can stop wearing you and the people out. But I'm going to leave it up to God to uh, endorse it and, and tell you to do it. And so he said, if God command you so, then thou shalt be able to endure. And this people shall also go to their place in peace. Now, if you do this, Moses, <laughs> I, I thought about that when I was reading it, when he got, got to that word saying, yeah, they go to the place. I thought about it. Somebody waited up there all day long in the line. They get close to it. Moses said, I'm done for the day. I can't take no more. <laughs> that person ain't going home in peace. That person going to be mad at Moses and mad at everybody else. See, I, I, I stayed in line all day, and I got up there, and then he cut it off on me. He wouldn't take me. <laughs> and some of y'all have been in line so well. And, and when you got up there, the people said, I'm sorry, we closed, and they wouldn't let me in. <laughs> you got mad. You got mad because this is the last one. How many times you've been somewhere, and you were in line, and the person said, I'm sorry, but this is going to be the last one right here. And you got five, six people behind. They don't go home in peace. They be mad. They be upset. They ready to tear somebody up. They ready to down. And they ready to riot. That's what they be ready to do. And he said, if you do this and let the people, uh, let the people judge these people and let them do that for these people so the people can a decent hour, people can go home rightly. And he said, then you don't have to worry about them going home angry all the time. Because some of the anger that they had against Moses was that last week I come up there to get, and, and they, when they come up there to get, and you didn't, you didn't wait on me, you waited on everybody else, and then you didn't wait. Going to be some mess. Create problems in the You can't get to the people and take care of the people of God. They get angry. Now, that's the reason. When I used to, I used to go to the hospital so much, that the people in the hospital, you, the, the nurses and things told me, said, said, Pastor, we're going to have to get you an office out here. The, because I was, I had to go so often. I was out there by myself, running to the hospital, running here, running there. And they just told me, said, Pastor, we're going to get you an office out here because you you out here all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to go to schools and helping the young kids in school, trying to keep them from getting in trouble. And, and, uh, they, one of them told me up that school, said, Reverend, we're going to get you an office. So you can just stay up here because you up here. Say, so you, you, have you read the role in school? Uh, no, half of them because they're getting these bad boys of mine. <laughs> but but I'm, I, I'm up here at school all the time. And, and, and that was running and running and running and running. You can't do that. Oh, now, I've been in this almost to be 40 years in November. And the only reason I, I, I still last the way I do and able to, to, to still have uh, joy in what I'm doing is because I've had to help them over the years. Because I'm be honest with you, early years, it was wearing me out when I was in this thing by myself. It was wearing me out. Mm -hmm. But thank God that, that for help. That's what, when God gives you some help, then you're able to do things a little bit different. And then the people have peace. He said, their place in peace. When they go back home, they'll go back home in peace. Did, did you get everything? Yeah, I got it taken care of. God blessed. Uh, uh, Deacon, Deacon, Deacon uh, Ricks was able to handle it for me. He got it took care of, so everything is okay. And see, the deacon was, uh, 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 the, 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 I talked to my, uh, my leader of my ministry and when we got into the word and had prayer, I'm I'm good. They helped me. I'm good. You see, and they go home in peace. But if they had to stay in there, and they had to stay there all day long, and then say, "Y'all, I'm I gotta go, I gotta go get something to eat," 
Yeah, I'm about to fall out here. I gotta go get something to eat. Well, you uh, you could have stayed one more, <laughs> <laughs> he, but he couldn't he couldn't handle one more. And so Jethro was telling Moses, "You got to get away from this, so that the people can go home in peace." And thank God now, uh, uh, three verses actually talk about a humble spirit, mm. uh, a humble action that is humble action. And watch what it says. So Moses hearkened unto the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he said. Now, he had a good plan. He didn't, he could have, Moses was stubborn and I ain't listening to nobody like some preachers do. Yeah, some preachers, that's why some pastors don't have good luck, excuse me, not luck, but good uh, ministry is because they they won't listen to nobody. I have, I have shared with some preachers some things and and uh, they went against it, and and uh, they ended up having problems. They want they don't want to take advice, but Moses humbly, it said he humbly, accept the advice of his father-in-law, and did all that he had said. And Moses chose able men out of Israel. He didn't just go get anybody. He got able men, and made them heads over the people. He had to, and when we first started at St. Luke, uh, and I asked the deacons, I told the deacons I want to, I'm going to put over each ministry. Now, there were some people who objected to that. And they said, I ain't, ain't no deacon going to tell me nothing. They want to go straight to the pastor. And I was mistakenly sometimes when I first started, and they, I started receiving it. Then the deacon said, Pastor, did, uh, they, didn't, they didn't come to us with that. I said, they didn't. I said, I'm sorry, brother. I said, I'll, I'll fix that. So when they started coming to me, I, Pastor, can we do so-and-so, so-and-so? I said, talk to your ministry deacon. Then. Well, no. I said, well, you need to go talk to him. And and I had to do that several times. We go talk to, to, to uh, your, your deacon over the ministry. And when I started doing that and sending them back to that deacon, they started, they stopped coming to me because they knew they had to go to the deacon first. And he helped them. And, and Moses gave them the ruler over the people. He gave them rulership over a thousand, over hundreds, and over tens. Now he had it set up so that, you know, it got 10 people here. Uh, this man can handle that. He got 10 over here. This man can handle that. They can, and they broke it down in such a way that everybody could get served and nobody was getting burned out. That's what ministry is about. You can't, my job as a pastor, this is what I tell, I say this all the time. People, well, he don't do this. He don't go that. He don't go. My job is to equip the saints for the work. If I had to do all the work, I'm not going to be any good to you and you're not and you're not thing out of me. Because I'm going to be woe out and burn out. But if I equip saints, if I equip the people for the work, Moses, he, he said, teach them. Give them what they need to do. And show them the work. And let them do the work. Now, if I was doing all the work, why am I going? Why do I need to admit it? These these people, I, I won't need you if I got to do it. When somebody said said one thing, I love about the pastor. If he give you a job to do, he let you do the job. He don't he don't come tell you how to do it. Don't do that. If I give you a job to do, I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna let you do the job because I, I, I'm I, I done taught you the best I can to do the work of the ministry. That's my job, equipping the saints. And the saints go do the work. And so he, he got rulers over, over them and placed them there. And watch what it said. And they judged the people at all seasons, at all the time, all the seasons. It, it, it wasn't no, well, I'm going to the pastor. No, they judged them at all times. They, they, they kept the ministry going at all times. And they were able to help the people. And the hard causes 
they brought to Moses. Yeah, but some get some get out of hand. My deacons or deacon they go they even go to they they go to the the ministry leaders and things they go to deacon Paul. They go to him first, and and then he uh, if he can't handle it he take it to Reverend Jones. He'll call Reverend Jones and they they get and if they can't handle it then they bring it to me. And then we'll sit down and figure out what we got to do about this issue. What should we do? But we got capable people in the church to help. That's what Moses said. I cho he chose out capable people who could do this work, and he didn't have to do it all by himself because he, not only was he wearing himself out, remember, he was wearing the people out. The people wasn't, get, wasn't getting served because Moses couldn't do it all by himself. He needed help. He needed help. And God brought him some help. And those men helped him. And, and they brought the hard things to Moses. But every small matter, they judged themselves. We got some great people in our church. They, they, we got some people who come to study. They come to Bible study. They come to study teachers meeting, they come to all of the, the seminars and and go to the congresses and things. They have learned. And they can handle those things. That They're capable of handling those things. And that's what we need. We got to do, we got to put people in place who's capable of doing the ministry. And then they got to do the ministry. I tell I, that St. Luke, no, I told him in a minute, if, you, I, if I'm about to do the work, I don't. you don't need the title. If I got to do the work, you don't need the title. I expect you to do the work. I don't, I, I just believe that you can go and do the right thing because I've taught you the right thing. And this is what God provided judges to help Moses. Moses couldn't do this thing by himself. He got and any pastor, any pastor that's trying to do everything in the church, gonna get burned out. I said Sunday, I said, uh, help me to help you. And I said, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be where I am now. Couldn't do what I'm doing. If I had to worry about the grass being cut. We got men. I don't. I haven't worried about that grass being cut in years. Those men are faithful, committed. They got Thursday set aside. They come out there and they cut that grass all, get that grass cut down, and the church beautified on on the outside there. Then we got people take care of the church on the inside, and make sure it's clean on the inside. And everything done, I don't have to go. Now, be honest with you, when we first started the church, I'd stay out there to the choir rehearsal. I'd be in my office like I, I'd be back there reading and studying. When they finish rehearsing, they go out. We go home, Pastor. I'd go out there, close the doors up, and clean the church. That's what I did when we first started. I'd go out there when they left. I'd stay out there until they left. And when they finished, I'd go out there. And I'd close up and clean the church. Get it ready for Sunday morning. Even when we were working on that building and we had dust and sawdust and stuff everywhere, I'd stay until sometime 10 o'clock at night vacuuming them pews and cleaning up and worship that Sunday morning. Brother John Prunkett saw me out there every time the mail course rehearsed. And we finished, because I'd be in I was in the mail course. And when we finished, uh, I would go to work. And I would I was I would start uh cleaning up. He saw me doing that one night and he's a pastor. You got to preach in the morning. Let me do this. That's what he said. You got to you got to teach Sunday school and then you got to preach in the morning. So let me do this. And he started cleaning the church for nothing, because we didn't have no money to pay nobody. He started cleaning the church for nothing. And and when we got a chance to start paying somebody $50, <laughs> that's what we were able to pay then, $50. We started paying 
a man $50. They said, who we going to get to clean the house? We going to get the man who's been doing it free. If he don't want it, we'll get somebody else. I said, but no, he gonna be. He, if anybody gonna get paid, he gonna get paid. He volunteered to do it free, and if anybody gonna get paid, he gonna get paid. And I start, and he started doing that. Start cleaning the church for us, and we. He was our first paid janitor, the first janitor of the church. That he did it. He come in voluntarily. Just saw me working and doing that. But now. I don't worry about the church being clean. The church is clean. I don't worry about the grass being cut. The gr I don't worry about the snow being plowed. Deacon, Deacon uh, Lewis, Percy Lewis, I call him Red, he'll call me about 7.30, 8 o'clock, uh, about 7.30 7, 7 that morning, somewhere between 7, 7, o'clock. So, Pastor, the snow been plowed. The, the, the parking lot is ready. We can worship. Every that's did that snow plowed. He called me, Pastor. We we're ready for church. I got the snow already plowed. Now that I ain't had to worry about that snow in years. I used to go out there and plow the snow. And and they they uh, I think it was Deacon Webster, Kevin Webster, come out there one day. Is get out of that truck. Give me that truck. They started plowing. And so I ain't had to worry about that no more. This is what this is what it's about. It's about helping the pastor with the ministry. Mm -hmm. And this is what this was. It was helping Moses with the ministry so that Moses didn't burn himself out and then wear the people out. So uh leaders, I just want to thank all of you, deacons, uh all of you trustees, I don't have to worry about what's going on with the church. Trustees take care of that. All of those things. And then, and I can't say enough about our office staff. I can't say enough, enough about it. I used to have to count the money. I forgot about that. I used to have to count the money and take the money to the bank. I had to do all of that. And, 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 and pay the bills. I had to do, I had to do all of that. I thank God for that my administrative assistant. Mm -hmm. And you all ought to be once in a while, y'all ought to just say thank you to her and, and, and Sister mm -hmm. Sue. And them them those ladies in that office, they take care of that office and its business. And and also John. The the three of them make sure everything in that church is working perfectly and running in that office. Reverend Jones or Fix computers. He, that man does so much, y'all. Y'all don't even know. And take care of our sick and shut in. He goes visit all of them. I used to have to visit them hospital. My wife would tell you, I used to get up at 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, going to the hospital. And Sister Betty Marshall, uh, who, who worked at the hospital, she used to sit all the time. I was in there all the time. Reverend Jones takes care of that. That's, that's holding my arms up. That's holding my arm. Everything you all are doing, y'all, you all just don't know. And I'm, I'm just, I, uh, you all have taken this load that Jethro told Moses to take. Get somebody to take some of the load off of you, and let so that you don't have to do that. But then also, if there's a pastor out there listening, don't be afraid to share your ministry. God gave it to you. Can't nobody take it from you. All you gotta do is is is, is train people and 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 my young preachers know I'll pour everything I can into any one of them. Any one of them that wanna learn from me, I'm willing to pour everything I got. I'm not afraid whether they're gonna take over or not. Because one day somebody gotta take over. I won't when, when somebody gonna have to take over. I can't do this all of my I can't do this. I don't know how long I'm going to be on this earth, but uh, I know I ain't going to be able to keep functioning the way I'm functioning. So somebody got to take it over. And that's why I train all the young ministers I can. I put everything I can in you. If you want to learn, I'll pour everything I got into you because I'm not afraid of sharing the ministry. Because God gave it to me. And when God says done, it's done. But I'm done, can't nobody get it. 
I said, I said to them all the time, at this point, can't nobody pass the St. Luke but me. Now, when God get rid of somebody else, he's going to put them in there. But right at this point, can't nobody pass the St. Luke but me. Let me show you, show you I'm not afraid. Reverend Robert Jones passed. He's a former pastor. Reverend Peter Freedom, former pastor. Uh, who else I got now? I know I had Reverend, Reverend Grissom, Reverend Earl and Neely. Been, been in the pastor longer than I have. He passed longer than I have. He started as pastor about a year or so before I did. A, a year or two. About a year or so before I did. Now, you can't be afraid for these Reverend, John, Reverend Coleman, Robert Coleman. All of these pastors long was in pastor before I was. Do I worry about whether they're gonna take my ministry and I won't share ministry with them? No, I'm not worried about that. You they are there to help, come to help, and and I, I don't mind sharing the ministry with them. Because this is the ministry that God gave me. And I feel like Moses, that Jethro told Moses, I got to share it with somebody. Because if I, if I don't, I, I get burned out. And I thank God for all of these. If, and, and if I miss one of you, that's a former pastor, you too. Because I just, I can, couldn't name all of you. That couldn't, in the top, off the top of my head. But all, all these former pastors, I'm not afraid of them because they come to help. They, they, these are men of God. These are able and capable men of God. That's what he said. Get you some able men. I, I'm glad to have able men around me. I'm not afraid of men, strong men. I want you to be strong. And that's what, that's what makes a church great is when they got great people and got help. Like Moses, the, the, the wilderness, the first Baptist church of the wilderness was a mega church. And, and Pastor Moses needed some help to carry that mega church off. Amen. And St. Luke, I tell St. People, I ain't got no mega church, but I, I need, I, we got a mega ministry. Mm -hmm. And we got mega ministry because we helping a lot of people. We do a lot of work. And I thank God for all of you in every capacity what, that you feel in that help provide for the people of God. Remember this. You helping me help the people. Amen. That's what we're doing. We're helping the people of God. And you are helping me help God's people. And when we help God's people, God's people go home in peace. And when they go home in peace, they don't mind coming back to St. Luke. Because they got peace when they go home. Amen. Amen. What a wonderful lesson. I tell you, that's a wonderful lesson. I've, I've preached from it. I've done things with it. But it's just like Lord looked like he gave me a new revelation on this ministry, on this thing today, uh, for this ministry because uh, we are we are in a we are, we got this we got people and that's what it's about helping the people of God and God bless all of you God keep you excuse me heaven smile upon you give you peace as I shared out our, our sister Lee will probably put out on our Facebook. Uh, Pastor Spears' is, uh, information, and uh, and uh, we we want to let it over to him and that uh, for the family and stuff. I don't I don't know if I'm going into the situation or not, but and then let me share this. Uh, Doctor Willie Wilson is going to be in town uh, the weekend. He's going to be at, out at uh, at some other, but that he's going to be out at North Love Baptist on Sunday evening, and uh, you know he's running for something. Uh, let's keep him in prayer, Amen. Because this Amen. this this virus is not playing with anybody. Mm -hmm. So, and y'all stay safe and wear your mask, Amen. Wear your mask and and sanitize your hands and do whatever you have to do to keep yourself safe. And thank God, I I saw uh, I saw uh, 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 our friend uh, at church Sunday, Amen. He he came and sat over there Sunday. He had been in the hospital. But God delivered him and brought him out, and I thank God for him. That God brought him, Sister Bam, and, and Sister Sharon R. Malone through it, and, and those that come through it. So we thank God for him. And uh, Robert, Robert Wright, I, I saw him sitting in the parking lot, and uh, we thank God for him. And uh, so y'all keep praying, amen, for one amen. another. And keep praying for one another, lifting one another up.
Amen. Let's let's close in prayer. I love talking to you all. And I guess I, I just enjoy you so much, even though I can't see you like my wife see all tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, she be looking at y'all, and y'all be in there looking and laughing. I just, just let it yeah, amen. Y'all be going at it. I hear y'all. Uh, be on in the other room, but I can hear y'all. But y'all be going at it. Eh? <laughs> well, God bless all of you. God smile upon you and give you peace. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you for this lesson, uh, letting us know that uh, we need help in this ministry. Yes. Uh, don't let us ever get to the point where we think that we can do it all by ourselves. And then we thank you for able people, capable people who can help us carry this ministry. We thank you for St. Luke and the ministry of St. Luke and all of those leaders in St. Luke and those that, that do the ministry of St. Luke. Thank you for each one of them and continue to bless them and strengthen them as they do ministry. And we pray again for all of our people and we're praying for the Spears family as well, Lord, and, and other families who lost their loved ones who have gone on praying for each family that, that now and and uh, those that are sick we're praying for them Lord we know that you are you're capable of bringing them through and as only you can is in Jesus name we pray and ask all of these blessings amen 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 bless you all and you all have a wonderful wonderful night